other glues like the rubber based ones obviously if you have something like super glue it sticks immediately and then you're done or done. and usually to your fingers <laughs> Hello and welcome to Stationery Test Drive, where every week we choose humble tools and exotic tools and strange tools in stationery uh, and art and craft making, and then we make things with them. I'm Vishal. This is Munjal. I'm Samir. And today we are going to be covering what is probably one of the most ubiquitous kinds of glue in the world, which is white glue. And we are going to be looking at Fevicol MR, which is the most popular white glue in India. And with over a billion people, that's a very popular glue indeed. So why, what is a white glue and why is it, well, why is it just, it says white adhesive on this packaging. White glue or wood glue, or if you're from America, you probably just know it as Elmer's. We in India call it Fevicol, even if it's not that brand, it's kind of become a generic. So, so Elmer's is a brand, Fevicol is a brand. Um, but they're all white glues. Yes, and they are all PVA glues, which right. is polyvinyl acrylate. Okay, that's so the chemical. A, yeah, so it's a it's a synthetic chemical which was only um, discovered sometime in the 1900s. Hmm. And uh, by the time we hit the 1980s or 1990s, it was kind of cheap enough to make that this became the de facto adhesive that we all use in schools and woodwork and a mm. lot of different things. I wonder if some of our uh, audience remembers a program called Art Attack growing up. That was very popular for them to use PVA glue mixed in with water in right. that show. For various applications, including uh, one on this show, which was, if you watched our episode on the canvas you used for decoupage. Yes. A, a, P, a diluted PVA glue is a sort of poor man's decoupage medium. Mm. So, white adhesive. Um, Minjal, you use this one, right? Yeah. And these are all very small, uh, cheap, kind of just, you get them down at any uh, grocery store type ones. Uh, but this is the smallest one. I think the biggest one you get is several kilos or a gallon's worth. So, uh, Fevicol actually uh, manufactured by PD Light uh, in India. Uh, somewhere around 1950s, I believe, is when they launched uh, Fevicol. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, like we were discussing, it was uh, launched as a, a replacement for the collagen and uh, fat-based adhesives that were available at that time. Right. So it was launched as a replacement for that. So just some background, uh, until the middle of the 20th century, most glues were of animal origin. Uh, so they were made from, by essentially treating skin and bones of animals and the, the extracting the collagen extra, extracting the collagen which would be the sort of the adhesive material and nowadays we extract collagen and use it in serums for uh, cosmetics yeah so we've gone in a whole different direction but glues thankfully uh, move to a more um, you know manufactured cruelty free i guess yeah cruelty free manufactured chemically produced uh, mode of working Hmm. and that's what's actually made glues to be so um, well cheap and cheerful for everyone to use and cheap and cheerful for everyone all the way up to like we said you get a gallon and then a woodworking person can take the same thing and build cabinetry with it or so uh, basically fevicol produces different uh, variants if you look at this this is fevicol mr Mm -hmm. which is uh, used for say a lot of art craft work you know Mm. you can bond thermocol paper even wood with this the the gallon that you're talking about is basically the fevicol sh which is uh, used for say uh, carpentry woodworking Mm. book binding even you know because it is uh, it it uh, you know i mean it kind of takes a little while to uh, try yeah. and actually you know uh, yeah. achieve that strength that we'll, is uh, required we'll actually get back to book book binding in a while it's uh, essentially the same kind of glue it's a pva glue as well mm-hmm. but i guess the the formulation has been varied for strength more now we picked these up literally down the street for the princely sum of this one is 5 rupees vinjal i think this one is 10 that's 10 yeah um there are two they're the same MR. They're different uh, types. Applicators. Of, yeah. And in fact, this one, the cheapest one, is an interesting 
applicator because it's got, as you can see, it is actually white glue and you can put it down in either a strip like that or press it down to get this kind of small, almost like a felt tip pen. Uh, but then the actual selling point or happy accident of this kind of packaging, which is just a tube, like a tube of tooth toothpaste, the crimp at the end is the applicator, which means that you can take it down and then you can just spread it out like this into this very thin, very thin, layers. very, yeah. uh, and don't think that this is nothing. This is still glue enough to at least bond two Four pieces paper. of paper together. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the more premium, double the price, 10 rupee one, you have a nozzle tip, which is more of which, a traditional. No, I mean, I realized which you can actually write with. Oh, yeah. okay. Which you can, I don't know, like, it's like a mainly cone, if you know. Mm -hmm. Hina cone, if you've ever seen one of those. And these dry into, oh, that's lovely. Um into a sort of a, a hard set, right? We'll try to keep this here as long as possible. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about these is that they start off white, but they generally dry pretty much transparent. Too transparent, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in fact, PD Light does make a series of, I think, glass paints and things, which okay. use a very similar nozzle and I guess maybe a similar base, but with colors. Hmm. Well, Menjal has already shown us some of the kind of things we do on this show. We're artists and designers and calligraphers, as you can see, uh, with many tools that are not standard for calligraphy. Uh, Samir, you have done the uh, a test drive using paper. So show us what you've done with glue and paper and I guess whatever other tools you used on it. So I, so I, I we leave this to dry in the center. I generally used this one, mostly used for applying uh, flat layers of glue and what I came up with is this very colorful very we'll just keep it in the center for a while uh, this is lovely this is very complex but and 3d and 3d yeah you can yeah, uh, it's, you it's can kind of a a bit of a pop-up pop -up. Hmm. this is a, tr a theme I'm seeing so it, it folds flat but ah. has a bit of a dimension to it okay uh, so how was the glue for that? Um, I actually found it to be quite good. It, it was better than I hoped it would be. Mm. Because most of the, the paper craft that I do, I tend to use um, glues that have that are not water-based. Right. Because the, the problem you can have with a water-based glue, which all PVA glue is, is the sort of warping of the paper. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, you can see it a little happening here. But uh, honestly, I found it to be a lot um, more minimal than I thought it would be. Mm. Especially when you use a, a flat applicator like this and you sort of spread it out in an even way. Right. The I water... was able to get some very even, mm. uh, you know, nice bonds between all these, like literally dozens of layers. Here. Mm. And the uh, the cutting work in here. I know this is not a video about cutting, but how did you get all these intricate cuts? Um, some of it is, of course, using my favorite tool, which is a craft knife, especially all of the, the counter forms here. But uh, after doing uh, such an extensive video on scissors, which you can see uh, one of our previous videos, I did end up using a scissor for a lot of these shapes because I really liked the fact that scissors let me um, cut things which were not as pre-planned. And considering that applicator is not the let's say, the finest one in the world. How did you... How was it to work with some of these smaller and thinner pieces? Uh, the smaller and thinner pieces, the great thing about this applicator is, as you said, you can also just kind of put a dot of glue down. Okay. And that is really how most of the smaller things were done. Hmm. So where, where I needed a big flat area, I would use the applicator to spread it around. And when I had a small little piece like this, like that's not even a centimeter wide, hmm. It was just a dot of glue and that was usually enough. So far from being just a, a vessel for this glue, the packaging itself is in some ways its own tool. Yeah, I mean, they have, it's, it's a great piece of design that um, they've managed to put it all into something that's very pocketable, but then also every part of it kind of could be used. Yeah, you could even, it's a nice flat barrel. You could I, probably yeah, like roll. I actually did end up kind of Rolling things flat with that uh -huh. quite a bit. Okay. So. Um, Benjal's wonderful uh, calligraphic work is still drying, but I think she can she can show you her own 
test drive for this week which ooh that is beautifully layered um so what i've uh, done this time is instead of uh, using paper um i've used uh, foam uh, board um this is actually very easily available and uh, i wanted to actually one of the one of the you know mediums that uh, they also mention on the website is that it's used uh, you know to bond uh, thermocol mm, okay now foam is obviously not thermocol but it is um, you know still um, a little uh, denser than paper yeah so uh, i tried this uh, 3d layering uh, you know with foam there are actually six layers over here mm. uh, and this is stuck to um, i think a paper that is uh, say 300 gsm mm. yeah. and the good part is that uh, you know uh, the paper has wilted a little yes because you know there are six layers with mm. fevicol on them but uh, it seems to have uh, still retained its uh, shape now uh, you know i just wanted to kind of demonstrate this this is really a fun thing you know to do whether you do it with paper or you do it with foam mm. you know you can just build layers like this with mm. shapes that you cut out differently and you know you can make your own compositions like this like this and this is a porous medium so i think one of the advantages of having a water based based glue is that it adheres to it a little better i seem to at least remember off hand using uh things that were glues that would eat into things like thermocol yeah so there are there are certain glues like for example anything that is generically called a super glue is generally polyacrylate based mm. and those bison kind of things and things like that maybe bi- bison kit is rubber glue that is in a um in some sort of like a a medium mm. i for, i forget what the medium is i remember those used to almost eat into them chemically into the things into like into thermocol, thermocol yes, because thermocol is sort of susceptible to those kind of um, alcohols and um, mm. you know corrosive basically. corrosive sort of uh, materials um this is actually an interesting experiment because pva glue in general white glue is best at um, sticking together things which are slightly porous Hmm. because i think the way it works is that it kind of seeps into the, the surface water. a little right. including paper of course hmm. so yeah this is just a great test this is um, in in some ways this is like wood light in some ways hmm. yes i don't know what the foam in this foam sheeting is but but it will have enough air holes and air gaps to make it porous and that's hmm. what helps uh, the white glue work well my experiment involved a lot of glue in fact i think i used about one and a half to two of these um and it was an experiment because it's i think what i'll do is i'll put this out here because it's a little it's going to take a while to show off on camera um <clears throat> so yes i as usual i started with a portrait because i love portraits and i do a lot of them and i used to have a sketchbook uh of pocket faces uh this is not a sketchbook um and i used the glue in several places to turn it into this i don't really know what to say it is it's, is it like an accordion fold of some kind it, it, this is all just glue and paper it is, it is glue alternate So Lines. so you can do let's say 40 or 50 of these and make a whole 360 lantern. Mm. I ended up with one of these. That is how those paper lanterns yeah. are. Yeah. Uh and if you're looking for this beyond an art piece because I like to look at some kind of utility, this is actually a stationary holder. If we have some pens or something somewhere we can put some more but uh basically sneak uh, peek sneak for peek for something things. Uh so you can just keep this on your desk and it just opens up more as you're using them and uh, yeah you can just uh, it's a a stationary holder that looks like a book uh, and yes how it was made was i used some backing board from some old sketchbooks i put some paper on them i made all these uh, from just some craft paper uh, that i is, had is the binding also with the fabric yes so the the pages first i thought of doing japanese binding with in which you have the page like that but then it was just i wasn't sure so i just said okay let me trust the glue because it seemed to work here well uh, much better than i thought uh, once it dried when it first was there it was just like this and i thought okay i've made a huge mistake when i tried to pull it apart there's no way 
this paper or this glue is going to handle it but yeah look that that is after very little and very little glue i must say this is 5 grams of glue or mm. 10 grams maybe um it's not a lot so at the most there is about 12 grams of glue in here and in small spots most of the time because he's doing it in a hurry um and yeah if you do about four times this you can make a nice rounded lantern um then the binding went down there there's actually this is a piece of fabric this is like some i think my dad got some jeans and the jeans were tied together in their folded form with a string of mm. denim so i did that uh this is the only other interesting thing which is a piece of um black grip tape uh we talked about canvas last week uh we talked we were talking about glue this week this is both of them together it's just a, a kind of an adhesive tape that's made off canvas which i thought looked nice here as just as a secondary binding um i in finally i did not actually need uh the binding uh the secondary binding the, i think the glue would have lasted but just i was being a bit uh extra cautious because at that point i wasn't sure how much of this would just like fall apart the second i mm. but yeah you can you can just really and i'm putting a fair amount of force here to open it up yes it it, it will tear eventually along some of those lines and i used a nice uh, thicker paper it's not a very thick paper maybe like 120 150 gsm uh, but it's a nice rough paper so i think the adhesion really goes down well if this was glossy it may not be as nice yeah that is my experiment my test drive for this week i think we've done three very different ones um, any questions <laughs> i think this is just a great uh, example of how much strength this thing is yeah. capable of um it is it because it it springs back you can put in pens and things like that and they won't fall out that's the weird thing this is like a this is a like we said this we're going to cover this soon you just put it in there it's it's not going to fall out because I mean, the, it's it's strangely appropriate because Favicol has always had this uh, i don't know if the camera can pick this up it's a very strange little logo of two elephants trying to pull apart a little sphere in the middle that you as you are stuck together with Favicol. I think in certain interpretations, I might be misremembering this. That uh, sphere is the Earth. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they they have always had a bit of a sense of humor uh, of uh, how they present themselves, and I think over the the decades that we have grown up with Favicol as kind of a normal as a, as a part name. of culture, you you say Favicol to the point where there are actual songs, and we we won't put them in here for copyright reasons. But actual songs with the term yeah, Favicol I mean, about in, metaphors in, for in India, the word Favicol just kind of means sticking together. Yeah, strong bond. You know, they're like um, friendships are like deep friendships are like Favicol. And, and over the decades, they have had extremely like hilariously comedic uh, ads. Yeah, which are which are all about strange situations where things stick because of Favicol. Yeah, so they've really lent into that, and it's it's good to see that it's not just all hype. Yeah, I was honestly after a lifetime of using fairly weak home glues that are only really good for maybe not even this, just like you you have some structure here. You have things that are pulling on things. I have things pulling on things here. You've got stuff to hold down. Most of the regular glues do not work that well. Yeah. Which is why we use things like uh, there's another brand called Fevi Bond, like you said, it's a it's rubber, a based. rubber based glue. Yeah. Uh, we use those kind of things, but it's nice to come back to a super cheap, normal person's application. I mean, because it's water based, it washes off. That's the great thing. You yeah. can mess up your hands with it and just go to the sink and wash no, it off, the, and it's fine. The the great thing about PVA glue and this holds for almost any PVA glue is a it does wash off very easily. Which is one of the the selling points that actually sold Elmer in the U.S. to begin with, mm-hmm. which is that you could wash it off children's clothes, okay. and that's how it became the de facto school glue. Mm. Um, so yes, there is a thing that you can wash it off. The other great thing is that unlike more serious glues, you can put something down and you still have some time to move it around. Yes, and that's right. very important. Absolutely, that's that's what I noticed with the foam, especially. Yeah, yeah. it was very easy you can, to keep. Moving it around. You can finesse it into place, which I really love. You have about easily four to five minutes. Mm. Okay. When you can move it around and it'll still stick if there's enough glue in there. Uh, Which is why why I went for the overkill because I could still move things around. I thought, oh no, this is a failure. I'm never going to be able to do anything. So let me just, for safety, put this down. And no, I did not need it. 
Whereas uh, other glues, like the rubber based ones, obviously, if you have something like super glue, it sticks immediately and then you're done. Or done. And usually to your fingers. <laughs> But even rubber-based glues and uh, other sort of chemical glues, the problem is that in that case, you need to wait for it to dry to a certain extent. And then mm. once you stick it, you can't move it. Yeah. There's that, that, that tension and anxiety over, oh, is, I need to get this right the first time. Otherwise, it's it's terrible. Whereas this is perfect for kids. Look, I was going through their uh, the Pedialyte website and, uh, you know, most of us don't really give credit, enough credit to, you know, uh, manufacturers. Uh, they have, uh, you know, some of the most fantastic products in their line. Fevicryl, which, you know, is very popular, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, in India for, you know, all, all sorts of crafting and uh, cloth based, uh, yeah. you know. And, uh, and paints as well. Paints as well. There, there's Fevicryl, there's Fevi Bond, there's Fevi, Fevi Quick, there's Fevi Stick. Fevi stick. So, what, really where does just, the term Fevi? What is there some kind of Greek or Latin origin? I don't know. I I couldn't find any particular uh, origin to it. Yeah, what does Fevi call mean? Because, because they have take it so for granted. Like they have been calling this uh, glue Fevi call from the first day it was made. So it's maybe we write to them and find out, <laughs> and if they're nice enough, they'll tell us how they came. To yeah, them. if yeah, you it's, if it's you interesting. are to... someone or you know someone who works for Pretty Light and you know the history, maybe you're a, more of a a history nerd than we are in terms of stationery. Please let us know. We want to know. I mean, MR, I'm guessing, is medium something and SH, SH is super hard. Or I no idea. Uh, yeah, these, these are all fascinating things for stationery nerds like us. Um, I think we will get back to finding more fascinating things about other implements. We have teased one of them right here. Uh, and for that, for much more, uh, please follow us. Please uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, please subscribe to the Inky Memo newsletter, uh, which is where you'll find many more things about this, including uh, there are we have started to do transcripts of the older episodes. We have over 25 of them. Um, so if you'd rather read uh, than watch us or listen to us, uh, there are versions of all of these episodes coming up soon, or it takes quite a while to do this. Um, but until then, for the latest stuff, uh, tune in to us every week here. We will be back soon. Um, I'm Vishal. I'm Samir. This is Minjal. And stick to it. <laughs>